first of which is this advertisement, which I actually shared on Twitter a few days ago. It was out on Vimeo, but now we have the YouTube version. Something going on with it, though, as you will see. The first time it got posted, the video actually got up to a million views in about a couple hours, and that led to some suspicion that Palantir was paying for views to boost their video up. So that is possible, but they did, again, take it down and re-upload, so it is back up again. It is now has a relatively normal level of views, and I saw that right away. I was like, what is going on? My guess is, and I'd love to hear your guesses in the comments, that someone potentially a shareholder or someone that just loves the company, just bought a bunch of views on the video, it was over a million views. Not anything manipulative per se, but maybe just having some fun looking to boost the video. If it was someone inside Palantir, I would be pretty disturbed by that. They've never really done this before, as far as I can tell from their previous videos. They all get around in the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. There's no reason I can think of as to why they would want to buy views. Um, since it is so obvious that was the case. Unless it was just a complete glitch, which is also possible, but YouTube usually is on top of things there. So, wanted to bring that to your attention. Today we're actually going to jump into FactSet, which I'm very excited to share. And I've obtained access, as I did with Bloomberg, uh, through an institutional account. FactSet, in my opinion, is much more easy to navigate than Bloomberg, and I actually uh, might prefer it for that reason but they are, they are different platforms. Anyway, a few things I wanted to jump around to. So here we have the equity structure, entity structure, my, my apologies. We've got the US uh, Palantir right there, and these are all of the subsidiaries. A few acquisitions, and then all the Palantirs, Palantir UK, United Arab Emirates, everything down here, Germany. So I just, I just wanted to show you sort of what that looks like because uh, I've not seen that elsewhere. So in terms of the events calendar, this is the projected date for the Q4 2021 earnings, which will be around mid-February, probably approximately February 15th. Estimate for EPS is $4 a share. Once again, I believe that's what they've had before. We've got an estimate of a consensus compiled estimate, fact set compiled of $418 million. That's six estimates. And the revision has been revising up and the guidance is 418 million dollars so you would of course notice that it is right alongside the guidance that we have gotten let's actually take a look at this next one yeah so we don't have guidance for the next few quarters i want to show you some other stuff i'm always getting asked uh, what could be a potential acquisition target for palantir well if i zoom in actually let me see if i can see oh, okay here we go all of the uh relationships here Green is suppliers, purple is customers, and yellow is partners. So if you're looking for a potential acquisition target, I noticed this company, which is a supplier. Yes, of course, we would look for suppliers here. Maxer Technologies, which here's their website. This is about a $2 billion company, and it looks like they're doing some interesting stuff in this sort of space arena. So $2 billion, let's see what are their products, the product overview. It potentially could tie into Palantir and what they're doing with the Meta Constellation with these satellites here and the exploration, I guess. Probably a far-fetched idea, but it does look like an interesting company. So I just wanted to mention that if I ever get asked again, that's what I would say. Given that they are a supplier and their relative rank is seven on this scale, of course they can't acquire Amazon or Microsoft. That's the next farthest one down. And here are the other relationships. Most of these we already know. Are there any of these that we don't know? I believe we know all of these, so that will just be good for now there. So here's the geographic revenue, and this is something I've been looking for for a long time. I had someone ask me, Palantir only says this is what we have for the United States, and then this is what we have for the rest of the world pretty much. So here it is, finally an answer, um, although you will see... We've got United States, United Kingdom, France, which is what we had seen before. And then we have mainland China. And it does say this is an estimate uh, based on FactSet's proprietary algorithm. I'm not sure that's correct because, as you'll know, obviously, here is the S1, or not the S1, the 
10Q, which is reiterating prior information, we do not work with the Chinese Communist Party and have chosen not to host our platforms in China, which may limit our growth aspects. Anyway, they say that they impose limitations on accessing of platforms in China in order to protect intellectual property blah 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 we know this already so am i wrong about this or is that just completely wrong anyway the other countries assuming these are correct here uh, given that they are estimates um, would be japan germany india italy again i hope that's correct doesn't really seem like it would be 100 percent correct but here we are with the exposure by super region and exposure by economy this is pretty interesting for revenue exposure by economy would be of course developed taking the majority of the revenue and there is some emerging around 10 to 15 percent and then frontier and rest of the world so thought i would mention that here we are with some more ownership statistics these are hopefully up to date we're looking at 33 percent institutional ownership i believe bloomberg was showing higher or maybe i was looking at the wrong thing and the top 10 percent of institutional holders take up around 19 percent of that institutional or the total ownership in all which is a good percentage more than 50 percent of the institutional ownership insider ownership is 16 percent 16 and a half percent and the rest is unknown so we've got 5.4 percent short float as of currently and that would take about 2.3 days i believe that's what it's saying given the average volume every day so let's take a look at how this has trended i believe there is, is there a graph for this the institutional ownership versus is the insider ownership as a change of outstanding share count over time the blue is the institutions we'll see that has gained and then shrunk and now it's gained to as large as it has ever been relatively in the last couple quarters the insiders on the other hand has shrunk down to the smallest it has been in the last or since going public so i do have more on that for some reason it's putting us at a 88% growth rate for a long term. Maybe that is Palantir's long term growth rate. That is not what they're projecting. But we'll get we do again have that target price above 20 at around $23 per share. Long term growth rate is very high in the upper double digits. Not sure if that's what the analysts are expecting. It's relatively unclear. We've got a hold rating and 11 analysts reporting on the stock. So in terms of Palantir's deal activity, we saw one deal in 2013, two, 2014, one, two, and one. Here are those deals if you are interested in learning more about them, digging into them. Okay, and this is really what I find the most interesting. So here we have the 13 management board members, average age of 41, average tenure of eight years, and the percent owned by these insiders is 9.6%. So I find this relatively interesting. Here we have the breakdown of the actual payments. We've got the salary and the total compensation for Alex Karp, the CEO and director. We've got Cohen, president, secretary and director. I believe he is less involved than he has been before. And then we have Sankar as the three big players here. Karp's salary is around a million dollars and he gets most of his compensation in stock, which has been one billion. Cohen, as I said, I don't think he's as involved as he has been. I could be wrong on that is, is actually his salary has decreased, but his compensation is around 200 million. And Sankar has a salary of half a million with total compensation of 100 million. And that total compensation might actually just be total as of time in the company, which is probably what I'm expecting it is. Oh, and then I forgot to mention uh, Cohen had sold out of his shares previously. Carp holds about a third of a percent of the company, if that is correct. And Teal holds 8.7% of the company. I guess that is all the information that I had selected. I'm sure there's a lot more here to dig into. So let me know what you want to see from this from FactSet in the comments below. But I'm just trying to think last minute if there's anything else. We could look at growth once that loads here, see what they're talking about here. Okay, so the CAGR is 47%, ARC holding 1.3% of the outstanding share count. One thing I do want to say about ARC is that their stock, their, or their ETF I should say, has actually declined more than Palantir stock has. So what does that mean? Well, when ARC goes selling Palantir, essentially what they're doing, because they still believe in the company, they have not completely exited is what they're saying is the other stocks have fallen more than Palantir has. That's why I say that Palantir has more relative strength than the other stocks because 
ARC is about down about 25% on the year, and Palantir's down around 20 or higher than 20% on the year. So Palantir has held up better than their other stocks. So they sell Palantir, they're selling Tesla, they're selling all of these other great companies to inject money into the companies they still believe in that are not doing well. So just w uh, one last thing on this, it's a 30 second ad, which is of course the infamous target for a Super Bowl ad, which would put Palantir at about a $6 million advertising budget for that. So not saying this will happen, not saying I want it to happen. It is a pretty great ad. I'm not sure bending six million dollars that fast is is a good thing for the business, but but it would be kind of cool to see as investors. I'm not saying I would want it to happen. Can't really control that. Let me know what you think about Palantir doing a a Super Bowl ad. And very last thing, these are the top holders for the uh, the ownership summary. This is where they are by region: New York, Philadelphia, San Francisco, Boston, Chicago, Tokyo, and London. Mostly index and growth, some aggressive growth, and then not really anything else there. That's where I'll leave it. Please let me know what else you want me to dig into, and I will catch you in the next video. Until next time.